Okay, so let's talk about working with storage spaces. Now, storage spaces on a Windows Server work pretty much the same way as storage spaces on a Windows desktop, except that we manage them differently because we can manage them through Server Manager. So, uh, kind of the same idea in that I have to have drives in my system that are not being used for any other purpose. So they can't be uh, used by RAID, they can't have any volumes on them, they have to be unused drives in my system. And once they're unused, then I can associate them with the storage space. So let's show how we would do that. I'm going to go to File and Storage Services, and then Storage Pools. Now I have one pool right here, and it's called the Primordial Pool, which is kind of hilarious actually. And I have two physical disks associated with this Primordial Pool. So that means they're basically available, but they haven't been used for anything. That's what the Primordial Pool is. I want to create a pool and I want to associate disks with it so that I can create a virtual disk on it. So I'm going to go to Tasks and New Storage Pool and I'm going to call this Data Storage. And then I can set a description of it if I want and it's managed by this server and it's available to this server and it's part of the Windows Storage and click Next. Now I can set a description here if I want, I don't need to. So I'm going to select the drives that I want to be part of this pool. Now I can have multiple pools here if I want, um, and I can break things down according to different pools. I can also set my allocation, so automatic allocation means that when I create virtual drives, it'll just put them across drives as it sees fit. If I have one set aside as a hot spare, what that means is I'm not going to put any virtual drives on that physical drive. But if one of the other physical drives fail, everything that was on that physical drive is going to get moved over to this hot spare. And then manual means I'll control the allocation of it. I don't want the system to do it automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them all as automatic, which unless you're doing a hot spare is probably the best approach. Notice my total capacity here is 254 gigabytes. So I'm going to click next. And then yes, create a pool. Now this is not a cluster pool because I'm not actually in a cluster. I can't make one. So I'm going to hit close and that's going to give me my data storage pool. Now this gives me a pool, I click on it, I see the drives, I can right click and remove a disk from it, uh, I can look at the properties of the disk, I can right click on the drive and delete, or right click on the pool rather, and delete the storage pool. I can also create a new storage pool if I happen to have uh, more drives available that I want pooled differently. Over here is where I'll create my virtual disk. So I'll go to Tasks and New Virtual Disk. Um, you can also click on the New Virtual Disk Wizard, which will do the same thing. That takes you there. This one, Tasks, New Virtual Disk, same spot. So we're picking the pool that we want to create this virtual disk on. And I'm going to choose the Data Storage Pool. And I'm going to create a new virtual disk. Now this is going to be my data storage space volume. There we go. Now, if I have um, different types of storage, so SSD or NVMe or um, standard storage, all in the same pool, I can create storage tiers. And what that means is data that's used a little more often is going to be moved off to faster storage devices. It's going to give me better performance. Data that's not accessed as often will go ahead and leave on the slower storage. Now that option is grayed out for me because all of my drives are the same. So, click next. <clears throat> enclosure awareness, copies your data to separate enclosures if you happen to have multiple external enclosures. We don't have that, so we're going to keep moving along. Now, storage lab. I can do a simple which gives me data striped across physical disks, it increases performance, decreases reliability, basically if a single drive dies, my storage is toast. Uh, it has to have at least one physical disk, does not protect you from a disk failure. Mirroring, data striped across physical disks, creating two or three copies, it gives me better reliability. If I lose a drive, I don't lose my data. Uh, so notice the note here, to protect against a single disk failure, you use at least two disks. Three if you're using a cluster. To protect against two disk failures, you have to have at least five disks. Creates a three-way mirror. And then parity is almost kind of like RAID 5, um, in that it writes data across all of the drives, 
but it does so by adding parity information. So if I lose a single disk, then I recover, or I can recover the uh, data using that parity information. Notice the note here, use it to protect against a single disk failure, you use at least three. To protect against two disk failures, we have to have at least seven disks. Well, I don't have three disks, physical disks, so I'm just going to go with the mirror and click next. And then I can set my provisioning. Now, fixed provisioning means as soon as I create the volume, it's going to allocate all of the space available to that volume. Fixed provisioning, I cannot make a volume larger than my actual available space. With thin provisioning, I can. I can make a volume that's larger than the actual storage space that I have. And then when I start to fill up my physical storage space, I just have to add more and the volume will then take advantage of it when I do. I'm going to go ahead and thin provision this just for the fun of it. We have we have the physical ability, so we had uh, 254 gigabytes spread across two disks, so 127 gigabytes per disk. So I'm going to create a 500 gigabyte storage space. Now obviously I don't have enough space to do that. That's okay, I'm thin provisioning. So it'll work just fine. Here's my free space, 252 gigabytes. My total requested size is 500 gigabytes. Weird, but okay. Because it's thin provisioned, all I have to do is add more storage, and it will use that when it needs it. So, shows me who it's available to, status, virtual disk properties, storage tiers is disabled, a smearing, thin provision of 500 gigabytes, and create and this will take it just a second and it creates a volume and hit close. Now, I have the uh, volume inside my here, my virtual disk. There we go. Now I'm going to create a volume on that new virtual disk. I'm going to click next, server and disks. All right, here we go. And this is the one I just created and 500 gigabytes is what it's recording is available. So I'm going to make a 500 gigabyte volume. I'm going to associate it as E. I can pick a different drive letter. I can choose not to assign it to a drive letter, or I can assign it to a folder as a mount point. These are the same things we could do in disk management when we were using that to manage disks. So I'll assign it as E, and this is going to be data storage. NTFS formatted, default allocation size, and go and it's going to create and format my volume. This will take it just a second, and we are up. So, just like that, we are fully operational. Let me open up my file explorer and go to this PC, and here is my E drive called data storage, which is 500 gigabytes. Even though it's actually sitting on 250 gigabytes of storage space, which actually only 127 is usable because I've mirrored it. So, we are operational with our drive now. Now, I can come back and right click on this and detach the virtual disk or delete it or extend it or all my management can happen here for my storage spaces. Okay, so there we go. We have configured a storage space on Windows Server.